Hey boys and girls, Mr. Vaughn here for your arithmetic number one. So you have your arithmetic number one page. Once again, arithmetic number one. This video is arithmetic number one. We've done this with literature. We've done this with science. We, Mr. Plumbing probably did it with history. We're doing it with arithmetic. We're going to define the terms and look at some ideas of biblical origin, biblical purpose, and biblical principles. You should be well versed in how to do this by now. And by the time you get to high school, you will certainly know exactly what to do every single time. Let's go with the definition of arithmetic. It is, again, a, what does it say? It says it's a noun. You should know by now, a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. Miss Sarah's over there watching me, giving me looks. Mr. Vaughn, you're so animated. That's what she says, but okay. It's a noun. What's a noun? A person, place, thing, or idea. So arithmetic here is a noun. It's the science of numbers or the art of computation. Computation means adding or subtracting or multiplying or division. It's computing numbers like a computer. Did you know that that's what computers do? They take a bunch of numbers. They do a bunch of multiplication and out comes a picture. The various operations of arithmetic are performed by, what does it say? Addition. Subtraction, dropping my drink, M multiplication, and of course, division. Now, for sure you know how to subtract. Now, check this thing out. This is pretty cool. This is what I like to, this is what I like to remember. If you could walk a mile an hour to get to a toy store, or 50 miles an hour to get to a toy store, which would you which would you prefer to go? Would you prefer to go at one mile per hour or would you rather go 50 miles per hour? We like to do things fast, don't we? If you go to McDonald's, well, we don't go to McDonald's. Let's see, what's a healthy store? Taco Bell. Let's say you go to Taco Bell. Do you want to sit in the drive-thru for 30 minutes or do you want to sit in the drive-thru for two seconds? Yeah, we want to go faster. Now, let me show you something. With addition, you have two plus two. Let's keep this off here. Two and two. And so we can go two plus two plus two plus two. Two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is. Okay, Estrellita, you should know this by now. Jasmine, you know it too. It's eight. Now, what if you had 100 twos? How many would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not gonna write them all, but just think we'd have to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'd have to have twos all the way down each column. And you'd have to go two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus two is ten, plus two is twelve, plus two, and down here would be plus two is twenty, plus two is twenty-two, plus two is twenty. I'm not gonna go all the way to 100. Do you get what I'm saying? It takes a long time and we wanna do it fast. But let me ask you this. Let's take this one for example. We have how many twos? One, two, three, four. We have four twos, four groups of two. Four times two is eight. Eight and eight. Which one was faster? Going two plus two is four, plus two is eight, plus two is or plus two is six, plus two is eight, get eight, or go four times two is eight. This one is faster. This is the two hours at Taco Bell. This is the two seconds at Taco Bell, right? It's much quicker. So addition is, or multiplication is just very fast addition. Let's look at, what about this one up here? Two hundreds. What if we went just 100 times two, right? That would be, end up being 200, which is faster. Counting all of these hundred, all these twos, all the way till we get to 200, or just going 100 times two equals 200. Which one's faster? This one, right? This is the Ferrari. This is the very fast way. So addition and multiplication go together. These are the computations of fast addition. Multiplication is fast addition. And the same thing with subtraction. Subtraction and division are the same, okay? Let's erase all these fun numbers. You have subtraction and division that go together. You can take 10 minus 10, minus, well, 10 minus 10. I'm not gonna write it all out. You'll figure it out. 
But if you base it, if you go 32 and have like 684, you're subtracting and you're breaking it down. So addition or subtraction and division go together, okay? Division is fast subtraction, just like multiplication is very fast addition, okay? So when we see here that the operations of arithmetic are performed by addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, those things are the basics. If you don't know your addition, you can't do multiplication. If you don't know multiplication, you can't do fractions or percents or decimals, which means you can't do pre-algebra, which means you can't do algebra. So you all need to be practicing your multiplications every single day. You've got to know them. Your ones to your twelves. You've got to know all of them. They're very important. It's going to help you. And Daniela and Samuel and Josiah, those on the um, Life for Fred know in the fractions book, you've got to know your multiplication. Today, I helped Daniela with something, and she had to do addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division all in the same problem. It was a difficult, it was a difficult situation, but we figured it out together. So that's what arithmetic is, is how to count. It's counting really, but counting fast, right? So you can count one, two, three, you can count all the way to 10. You can count a hundred by ones, but what's faster to count by hundreds? By fifties, 50, 100. Or you can count by 25s, 25, 50, 75, 100, okay? Lots of ways of counting, but it's all addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, okay? Those four are the primary things. When you do fractions, you're going to be adding fractions, subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, dividing fractions. When you do algebra, you're going to be adding things, subtracting things, multiplying things, dividing things. Everything in math deals with these four things, okay? So let's go to the biblical origin. Now, we know where literature come from, came from. We know where history comes from. We know where science comes from. Where does arithmetic come from? Where do you think? What kind of numbers does God use in Genesis 1? Let's open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Actually, you can do that on your own. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. You can pause the video right now if you want to. Just go ahead and pause it and open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, did you do it? So in Genesis, there's two kinds of numbers that we can count by. There's ordinal numbers. And there is cardinal numbers. There are cardinal numbers. Ordinal numbers show the order. This is, you're the first, you're the second, you're the third, you're the fourth, you're the fifth, right? We're the third class. That's an ordinal number. If you're first in line, that's an ordinal number. But you only have two feet, right? You have, um, I don't know how many hairs you have. I have less hairs than you do. Stop laughing. But there's only one building, right? There's maybe in your house you have three bathrooms or three bedrooms and two bathrooms. These are cardinal numbers, means it's exact. So I want you to look in Genesis 1, and I want you to tell me, and just write here in the answers, just tell me what kind of numbers is God using in Genesis 1. Is he using ordinal numbers, or is he using cardinal numbers? So look in your Bibles and find that, because you notice or these kinds of numbers come from the Bible. All right, God used them in the very beginning. And then I want you to go to your next question, Genesis 2, chapter two, or chapter 2, verse 21. And I want you to tell me there, is God using ordinal numbers or cardinal numbers? Okay, they both have their own answer, so make sure you do that. So we see that numbers come from God. Now, let's, let's look at how cool this is. Numbers are a perfect representation of who God is. Remember the Bible says that God... The Bible says that God is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. God was never born. Think about that. God was never born, and he's never going to die. He had, no, he had nobody created him. He's always existed forever and ever and ever and ever. He's always existed, and he will exist forever and ever and ever and ever. He's never going to die. He's never going to not exist. He's always going to exist your brain's blown up. Mine is. That's pretty cool, though, right? Now, our number line starts with zero. 
Let's look at a let's look at a number line and let's see how this number line works with God. We have one, two, three. What's the last number on the number line? If we were to draw all the numbers, you got everybody knows this. What would be the last number? Is there a last number? The answer is there is no last number. It goes on forever. Hosea or Josiah, you could sit here and start counting right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. You could even count really fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifty, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. As fast as you can. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna give it a second. See how fast you can count. See who can count the fastest to 10. Go for it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Did I win? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, it's pretty fast. But you could count that fast for one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. You could you would never sleep, never eat, never do anything, and you could keep counting and counting and counting and counting. And by the time you're 800 years old, if you live that long, you would still be counting because there's no last number. Doesn't that tell you like who God is? But what about this way? Is there a beginning? On this one we go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. What's the last number this way? There is no end. Or there's, we should say there's no beginning. There's no beginning. That's my signature for beginning. <laughs> there's no beginning. God has no beginning, and God has no end. So that's pretty cool, right? We can even look at geography. There's a circle. Where's the ending of the circle? There's no ending. There's no beginning and no ending. The circle just goes and goes and goes and goes forever. Isn't that a great representation of God? All right? So there's things that we can learn from math that teaches about God. 2 plus 2 is always going to equal what? It's always going to equal 4. What, what about when you're 300 years old? Is it still going to equal 4? Well, of course it is. In a million years, it's still going to equal 4. Right? That's math. It's consistent. It's precise. It's exact. Just like God is consistent, precise, and God is exact. Let's look at the big, biblical purpose. What kind of information did God give Noah in Genesis 6, 14 through 15? So I want you to read Genesis 6, 14 and 15, and tell me what kind of information God, what did God tell Noah? What was the biblical purpose of math? What did he have to do? That's for you to figure out. Then we're going to look at biblical principles. In biblical principles, what is the one thing about God you can learn from arithmetic or math? So I want you to think in your own brain, what can I learn from God about math? We already mentioned a couple things. You can look, listen back to this video to see what math teaches us about God. Now, what I want you to do is on the bottom of your page, you're going to draw your own number line. Okay? And you can take it to whatever number you want this way and whatever negative number you want this way. But remember, we always finish our line with an arrow because that arrow, and you'll learn this, you'll learn this in geometry, that arrow means that the line goes on forever because a true line never ends. If we do this, that's not really a line. You know what that is? That's called a line segment, right? Now, look at us. This is us. We start at zero. This is, this is God down here. And look up here. This is kind of interesting. Where's my eraser? There it is. Down here is God. This is God. This is us up here. We, have a, we were created, right? Did we always exist? No, we were created. Whenever, you're, whenever God created you, that's when you created. When you were born, you were created. And you're going to live how? How long are you going to live? You're going to live forever, right? And that's a choice we're going to make. We're gonna, we, and we have to decide, are we going to live with God forever? Or are we going to live without God forever? Once we die... Where are we going to be? Who are we going to be with? Are we going to be with God or without God? Because we, God created us like him, that we have no begin, we have no end. We have a beginning. God has no beginning. We have a beginning, but we have no end. Once this body dies, and I'll probably die before you guys because I'm a lot older than you. 
when this body dies, your spirit still lives forever. There's no ending. So math can teach us good principles about life. Math teaches us, hey, there's a beginning, but guess what? You're not going to have an end. So, all right, I want you to draw your own. I want you to draw that number line down there uh, that represents God. And get this turned in on Friday. All right, boys and girls, enjoy having your math class. If you need help, give me a call.